Welcome to the Ventura Rock Spot. Yep, we are still in the middle of a pandemic, but we're doing this all very like we're they're in their home. I'm in my home. Michelle's in her home. So I'm taking off the mask. My name is Pam Baumgartner, and I'm going to be your hostess for this episode of the Ventura Rock Spot. If you're from around town, then with any luck at all, you are familiar with VenturaRocks.com. And uh, I also write the music scene article for the Ventura Breeze. And I host a little radio show at a Caps Media called the Pam Baumgartner Music Hour. And that is at 104.1 FM KPPQ LP. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but the brainchild of Ventura Rock Spot is actually from Mich Michelle Hoover, who came to me a couple of years ago with the idea of partnering, partnering up her video and producing skills with the platforms that I already created, VenturaRocks.com, the YouTube channel, and Facebook, of course. And uh, she pitched it to me and I thought, this is a no-brainer. So we've, we've been doing this for a couple of years. So everyone say hi to Michelle behind the scenes. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for doing that. She's producing the show tonight. In any case, thanks for tuning in. This episode, I have an amazing artist and friend who has never ending energy, uh, ne never ending love, uh, never ending desire to help, and never ending talent. So please welcome to the program. This is Kelly Zerbies and Perry Robertson from Kelly's Lot. Hey, Hi, how are you doing? I guess we're going to do a song right away, right, Pam? Yeah, why, why don't we just jump right in so everyone knows what you guys are about. And you're going to do which one now? We're going to do Can't Take My Soul. Title track, good. Go for it. Every morning that I wake up, I got a brand new day. Every morning that I wake up, I got a brand new day. And you can't take my soul away. You can't take my money when they lay me down. Yeah, you can't take my money when they lay me down. But you can't put my soul
Yeah, 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 yeah. I All right. miss you guys. Nice indeed. All hey. right, before we get into the new CD, because you have a brand new CD out on the on the market right now, um, yep. why don't you give us a little bit of background about how you guys got together? Because Kelly, you were actually performing before you met Perry, correct? Yes, yes. I started the band in 94 and uh, met Perry in 96. And he basically offered to produce a, a live recording from the Troubadour. When him and I started dating, he, you know, decided he was going to help us out. And he recorded a live, uh, a live concert at the Troubadour. And that was one of our first, uh, our first, first releases. And then he joined the band about six months later. And that was in 96 and uh, has been in the band ever since. So that's... How many years have you been in the band? 24 years. I've been in the band 26 years. Oh my God, that's crazy. So you guys so, actually yeah. celebrated as a band 25 years together a year ago already? <laughs> what, say that again? Was it a year ago that you celebrated 25 years together as a band? Yes, yeah. in October will be 26 years. Wow. So when you, <laughs> the celebration, you actually went to LA and you had a show there. Where was that at? It was at the Mint, which is the one place I played at the most in my career is at the Mint. I started playing there in the 94, 95 and have played there ever since. Right. And then and then just for fun, you came to Ventura and you had a show here as well for us oh. local folks, which is so sweet of you to do. Yes, that was a lot of fun. That was over at Ventura Beach Club. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. OK, so let's talk about the new CD. Before we do that. Why don't you tell me about the songwriting process? Because you are forever writing material, aren't you? Yeah, you know, Perry and I write a lot together. And sometimes he's just fiddling around on the guitar, playing some really cool riffs or, you know, some chord progressions. And I just hear something. I start singing. And a lot of times, whatever I'm singing is kind of crazy stuff because I just say what's at the top of my head and I'm a little crazy. So, uh, <laughs> and that usually is what, what ends up making the idea for the song. Whatever comes out of my head, you know, there's a song I wrote called Green Toads. And, Black Eyed Monsters, Green Toads and such was the first line I, that came out of my mouth when he was playing these guitar riffs. And Perry stops me and he goes, you have to keep that in the song. I'm like, what? Black Eyed Monsters, Green Toads and such. And so I said, well, what, what is that? What could that be? What could that be? And I thought about, you know what it is? It's like all the icky stuff that we keep inside that we need to kind of get out. And so that became a song called Green Toads. So it's very organic kind of in a way that how we write songs. And sometimes on Facebook, I ask people for a word and that word just speaks to me. The word and sometimes the person, depending on who gave it to me, I, I kind of think about who they are and what they're doing and why did they give me that word? And that's my idea. I just, I grab ideas out of the, you know, just out of the sky. I, I All right. Don't... And one of the more recent ones was the word butterfly, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what was the background of that song? Prince had just died the day before, and I woke up um, the next morning, and I asked people for a word, and butterfly and purple were right there. And I was feeling really sad about it, too, and, and it was kind of a song about, we've lost so many musicians in the last few years. Maybe it's because I'm older now, and my musicians that I've always followed are passing away, and so the song really honors musicians who who pass away but leave their music. It's kind of that, and Prince is the, you know, the inspiration. There goes a butterfly Soaring across another sky Singing while we weep Dancing while we sleep There goes a butterfly You are a butterfly Soaring across a purple sky Still giving us a sign That being different is fine Music plays just like before Everybody's dancing across the floor 
So, Kelly, would you consider yourself a folk singer first or a blues artist? Because I've always, up until last year, I pretty much thought of you as a blues artist. But at that show with the men, it was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, growing up, my mom listened to a lot of blues and, and even, you know, the old standard stuff, Frank Sinatra. But she was really listening to the blues late at night. So that was always in my soul, kind of. It was hidden. But my mother bought me a guitar when I was 12 and I started listening to Cat Stevens. And so really Cat Stevens is the number one influence for me. And that's more folk. And so, yeah. uh, you know. Tea and for so, the Tiller Man? Oh my God. So good. So good. Yeah, so I, um, you know, I started to do more folk. I mean, that was, you know, what I've done. And then Perry and I, we were doing more folk rock as Kelly's Lot. And then we just started listening to more blues and we just went that direction. And that's what we've been doing for like 12 years is blues. And it's a lot of fun to play the blues. So we're in a fun mode. <laughs> and we have a great blues community here in Ventura as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, let's do another song live, shall we?
So since this pandemic hit and you guys have been performing um, no live shows, so to speak. Um, all right, so you do live, but they're live streaming, not in person, okay? So you haven't been doing live in-person shows. How is that um, as a performer only performing to a camera and knowing there are people out there listening, a lot of people listening, but you can't see the response. How, how is that as a performer on your end? It's really, it is tough, I, I must say, but I, today somebody was at the post office actually, was I must tell this quick story, was she was wearing a mask and I said, I could see a smile, I could see a smile. And she said, you can, you know, she had the mask on. I said, yeah, I, look, I see, your, see it in your eyes. You know, I've always looked in your eyes. That's what I do. I've never actually looked at people's mouths when I when I see them and talk to them. I always look in their eyes. So it's not been as hard for me because of that. And so I feel like the same thing with the music is that I just feel the people that are watching and I think about them in their living rooms and I think about what they're doing and I think about the, the things that they're going through. And so in a way it's the same for me because I feel the people watching me and I feel the people in the audience. It's all about feeling their energy. And for some reason I can feel them through the, through the computer. <laughs> so that's kind of like, it's hard, but I, I've been able to, uh, you know, use emotion to emotion is still there now, you know, the emotion of singing to people and trying to lift them up or, you know, open their hearts or it's still there. So, um, thankfully, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not having this hard at the time. Right. And I have to say, I, I've had this conversation with other people is that, you know, with a stage or with uh, movies or television or performing artists and musicians is that I've always considered there were two different types. There was the one that it's all about the art and about communicating and delivering something to another person out there, which obviously you are. And there's the other one that's, it's all about me. It's all about me. I'm a movie star. I'm a rock star. This is what I want. It's all about me. I'm just very eternally grateful that you are the first kind that it's about the art and it's about giving back and about communicating and uplifting people. Well, Especially yeah, that's now. What we do with online concerts. People need to remember that they are doing that. It's giving the light to these people that they can go online and watch these things. Yes, so. absolutely. Um, so you've been playing for 26 years this October. Uh, yeah. The first place you played as a professional band, you said, was where? The Roxy. The Roxy. God, how did you get that gig right out of the box? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was in a band called the Yaya's, and we were doing the little, you know, doing some little coffee shop and stuff. And the bass player that was in there, she was a good friend. She'd become a good friend and was managing me. So she just decided she's going to go full bore. She got the, her ex-boyfriend, uh, J. Peter Robinson, to produce my new demo. I had Lee Sklar, Ralph Humphreys play on that. It's amazing. And she just said, oh, you can play the Roxy. And she just called them up and she, we had to sell tickets, of course, and we did great. We both of us sold the tickets. And I was scared to death because that was my first real band concert, you know, and, uh, but I got a lot of inspiration from Janis Joplin, watching some VHS videos of her the weekend before the show and just realized I just have to be myself. That's how, what I learned from her. And that's what I did on stage. Be yourself. Yeah, well, and when you do Janice, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you are channeling this woman. I am. She's so good. Uh, you know, I wrote a song called Take This Heart because it's, I sometimes I channel her too much. So I'm almost copying her because like I wrote a song called Take This Heart and it's, it's kind of a lot like Peace of My Heart. And it's about take it off, take it away from me because it's just too hard to, to feel anymore. And no, it, it's, a, it's a tribute to her. And that talent it is, and what it did for so you. So it's not really copying her, but I, I don't, you know, I don't mind copying her. She's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and and she's not around to complain. I'm, I'm sorry to say. So it's yes. Like, yes, you yeah. have license to do that absolutely because she's not here. You can do it for us because that, that what a talent. Oh, all right. So you started. You, you had your gig at the Roxy. What's the biggest gig you've ever played? Well, um, I love. Waterfront Blues Festival is pretty big. I mean, that's the one we play up in Portland. We've done that three times, but I think the one with the fireworks in France was pretty big, 18,000 people. And we were the surprise. They didn't never usually had a live band, and so they hired us. We've been playing France for a few years at that point. And 
the people that were the fireworks, the pyrotechnic engineers, they were fans of ours. And so they talked the festival into hiring us as a gift because it was the last festival they were going to do. And so oh. they had a gift to the audience. And that was pretty amazing. That was, How was that received? Oh my God. It was, it was, um, it was just amazing. It's kind of funny. They, uh, there was three sections. There was 8,000 seats right in front of us. And then there was a, like a half a football field with people in blankets and all that. And then behind that were these risers. And the, the French, VIPs. the French as the French do, were very, very sweet and cordial and didn't want to, uh, didn't, didn't they want to. They just listened. They were like, they listen. listened, but they didn't want to stand up in front of the people behind them. So they were all oh. hopping in their seats, but they wouldn't get up and and parties. <laughs> I think we did a jazz shop that day too. Yeah, we did. Yeah, did. Bobby McGee. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it was so much fun. Okay, so let's do another song. That is just beautiful. So you speak French, do you? <laughs> I, I should. I, they don't want me to come back to France unless I learn how to speak French. <laughs> it's they hard. don't roll their eyes at you or anything, do they? They what? They don't roll their eyes at you, do they? No, they're very nice. But I've been there now eight or nine times, and you know, I get used to it after a couple of days, and I can understand and speak a little bit. But 
I really should learn how to speak French if I'm going to keep going back there. It's just, you, I, you know, once you, you get older, the French you connection. Can't... Say, you, say you call again? it the French connection, right? Yes, yes, it's the French connection. I love it. You know, the French, my French artist that I know over there comes here and plays with us, and we go play over there with him. And it's just wonderful. Right. Okay, so talk a little bit about Another Sky, which is your latest CD. Um, tell me about the production on it and who's the players on it and and uh, and such. Well, you know, we were in the COVID, the COVID thing, the, the quarantine, and uh, Doug Pettibone, who's played with, you know, everybody from Lucinda Williams, John Mayer, uh, Zuccaru, and now with Keith, Kiefer Sutherland, he's in his band now. He lives down the street in Oxnard from us, and so he'd lost some work, and we were bored, and we said, let's make an album. So I got about six of the album, the songs from the Facebook board challenge, and I have a few older ones and some ones that we just written, actually one for the Ventura St. Patty's Day Parade. That was one of them that we never got to do because that was canceled. And a Christmas song I had actually written for Cap Merrick's CD, but we ended up doing Angels We Have Heard on High. So I had this extra so Christmas beautiful. song, which there's a Christmas song on this album. And so Doug and Perry and I decided we're just going to uh, do like a folksy CD, right? And then we started, as soon as we put the, the two guitars and the vocals down, it just started to speak to us like, well, this needs violin, this needs uh, accordion, this needs... And the first thing we did, though, is we made sure that everybody in the band got to play on it. They got to play on it. So we got Frank on harmonica, Rob Zuka on guitar, Aviva Maloney on penny whistle instead of saxophone. Our other sax player, Bill Johnston, played the clarinet. Uh, we got Art Mendoza on the drums and Matt McFadden on the bass. But then we got two of our friends who play stand-up bass, and had them, Paul Kennedy and David Grover, play the stand-up bass. And Phil Parla piano. And Phil Parla piano played on the, the accordion. Aubrey Richmond played the violin. Is that it? Uh, Rick. And Rick Monroe, my friend from Nashville, did a duet with me. It's a kind of country duet, country music duet, and Doug Pettibone sang Tangled with me, so we have two duets. You know, that Doug, that Doug can sing. Oh, what a singer. He's got such a beautiful <laughs> voice. Yeah. Yeah, I think he reminds me of a Daryl Hall mixed with a, what was that I said? Oh, the Van Morrison. That's who it reminds me of. He's so good. Well, that's a nice neighbor to have, I must say. <laughs> He's a good neighbor to have anyway. So he's a yeah. Okay, so you can find out more about Kelly's Lot. They have a website, kellyslot.com. Uh, you're on Facebook. What else you got going on? And Instagram and Spotify. I'm on okay. Twitter, but, you know. Now, if they go to the website, they can find out where to find all your music on there as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Kelly's Lot, K-E-L-L-Y. Kelly'sLot.com. <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, and don't thanks for pointing that out. I'm never going to forget that now. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you two, for being here today. That's going to wrap up another episode of the Ventura Rock Spot. On behalf of Kelly and Perry from Kelly's Lot and Michelle Hoover, producer extraordinaire, and myself, Pam Baumgartner, thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you next time. Got me, got me coming around. Got me, got me coming around. I can't hear.